Hey, if you can get these put on and you know here in about an hour or so, that'd be great. Okay, I don't have nothing else. Hey, be careful. To do. Welcome to another episode of Clay Camp. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as watch the video all the way through. Not because I you, because man, we're gonna have a fun time today framing. We're still framing. I know I've said that for like the past 50 vlogs. It seems like we've been framing forever, but not really. Maybe like five or six days or something. And if you clicked on this video, more than likely you came here to see the common five mistakes that contractors make. So go to this number if you want to skip ahead. Otherwise, enjoy the vlog. And although I'm a general contractor, this is not necessarily just about general contracting. This is all kind of contractors, like subcontractors and general contractors. Come on, we got my windshield wipers in. Yeah. Hey, if you can get Get these put on and you know here in about an hour or so that'd be great okay i don't have nothing else be careful today. thanks mom see you later you're really gonna put them on mom yeah you're sweet you know how i mean yeah oh, no. hey i tell you what you know how you got a good woman she'll swap your windshield out and get your windshield wipers fixed up how'd you know how to do that mom you know all right thank you mom now, i hope they don't come off uh, i have faith in your ability now go cook me some supper so with the house they're moving right along with the roof structure they're getting the tallest part of the roof really kind of hard to see maybe with this drone shot will help a little bit and get some knee walls done because the front of the house is actually a little bit higher than the rest of the house just to give it a little bit of curb appeal what happened you can probably get a bucket get that one river and judah happens okay. right there dad you're not What's that? Mm -hmm. Great chicken and potatoes. Oh, potatoes. Okay, these are five points that I wish I knew when I went into business. And some of these things I've done really well at, and some of these things I still make mistakes and just sort of fall into them. And know that this is the tip of the iceberg on things you need to know to be a general contractor or a subcontractor or really anybody involved in the construction business, but that it all sort of revolves around building. And also know that this is not like in any kind of particular order. They're all really important. The first thing is get a credit line with the bank and your suppliers. What this enables you to do is operate even if cash flow is low. There's not a bigger turnoff for me when somebody asks me to pay them up front for materials. This indicates a few things to me. You're not building a business. You're not self-employed. You're just employed by a whole bunch of different people that get to tell you what to do. Because a construction business should be able to finance and operate at least 30 days of a project. The other thing that that does is make it to where you don't have to bother your clients that often. If I'm knocking on your door every Friday for a check, that makes me an employee. And that is not what I set out to be when I set out to be a business owner. As a business owner, you are not entitled to a weekly paycheck. You should be able to finance your projects. Boy, that sounded kind of brash. Sorry about that. The second tip is serve your customers and make that your priority. And I don't mean that in the way of like neglect yourself. I'm just assuming that you've already taken care of yourself. Know that the reason that you're operating and doing business is because of the people that pay you and you're able to sustain a business because people will hire you and people will pay you money to do what you do. Know that your thoughts and actions should always be revolving around serving your customer. The most influential person on the planet ever in history was Jesus and he, that's all he did was serve people, man. That's a, That was his thing. Your clients want to be appreciated. Your clients want to be taken care of and it's easy to sniff out when you have other priorities. I had a guy ask me for a draw on a project he hadn't even done yet and I kind of appreciate his honesty because he said he bought a TV and needed some way to pay for it but uh, what yeah, yeah. And that explained to me that his priority was himself and buying himself a TV and not servicing me as a customer. Anyway, next point. Pay your employees well, and although they might be your friend, they're not necessarily there to be your friend. They are there to make a living for their family. And the way that you can speak to them is not being nice, although you should be nice to your employees. And it's not getting gifts. It's not like other kind of, it's not giving them pats on the back and promotions and other weird stuff. It's paying them. It's important to pay a person what they're worth because eventually they're going to find somebody that will pay them what they're worth. I ain't going to lie. Don't take on too much work. There was a point in time where I would acquire like the amount of work that I had to the amount of profits I had. That could not be farther from the truth. And you always hear about multitasking. Well, there's no such thing as multitasking. There's only such thing as half -assing. If you take on more than you can chew, it's very obvious something's not going to get done right. And what that does is it pisses people off. You're going to find it really hard to show your customer that they are a priority if you take on too much stuff. I had a lumber supplier tell me one time that I was not his only customer, that I needed to be patient. You know who that guy works for now? Yeah, me neither. And that's not important. What is important is who does he not work for anymore? I don't want this to seem like I'm bashing people. That's not what this is about, but it does help to be able to relate certain real life experiences to these things, you know? And last but not least, know your cost to do business. And what I mean by that is know your overhead costs, know your insurance, know your license costs, know your payroll taxes, your office expenses, office supplies, fuel, everything that it costs to do business, all the way down to a pen. I mean, you have to really think about those kind of things because they eventually add up. And the things that cost you money to actually do the job are the easiest things to count. You just have to think about the things that are not directly related to the project. For example, somebody that you're installing a door for should pay 
pay for the door, the trim, the nails, the glue, right? That's all they should pay for, right? No, that is not right. The fact of the matter is, before you can install that door, you have to have insurance, you have to have fuel to get there, you have to go pick the material up. There's just a whole list of things that you have to have in order to be able to do that project. It may seem like a simple project, but the thing is, is you can't do that project unless you have these other indirect expenses accounted for. Therefore, the expense should be passed along to the customer and it should be included in on the job. And that's pretty much it. And I want to apologize for talking so fast, but I know I got to pack a lot of information in a small window of time because attention spans are not very long. I know my attention span is not very long at all. Wait, what was I just saying? Before I go, I want to show you some more progress of the house we're building next door via drone. <laughs> That's been another episode of Clay Cam. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow.